on Google's first page in Double Your Patients webinar. It's going to be an exciting webinar. I am today uh, the marketing manager here at iMatrix. I'm Google certified through uh, AdWords and Analytics. We've uh, kind of gone through a lot of different changes with Google, and we're going to go over some of these things with you today. And basically what we want to kind of talk about is some of these little features that we want to go over um, from things like Google's latest algorithm updates, which just so everyone knows, those change on the daily, whether they're small or large. Um, different features that are successful for PPC ad campaigns, um, different, uh, different features that you probably don't know about or maybe you do know about, but different ways that you can actually utilize them, different extensions, ways that you can actually help to maximize your real estate on the PPC search engine results page. Social media and SEO, which is also a very important topic because a lot of times people think that SEO is something that can happen overnight. Um, think of PPC and paid advertising as something that you can possibly have happen overnight because you're paying for it. Um, it is paid advertising, whereas SEO is almost kind of a uh, kind of like a credit score. Um, you need to build it up, and the more and more you build it up, the better it's going to get. But you need to consistently build it up uh, because once you do kind of let it go and just let it go stagnant, it will start to decline, and uh, other people will start to take over on SEO. Same thing with social media; it definitely helps to uh, increase your SEO in certain aspects. Um, so that is kind of a misnomer. A lot of people think social media itself will help to increase the SEO and the rankings of your website. Uh, but they don't. There's just different things that you can do to help encourage the SEO uh, increase in your rankings for your website. So we'll go over that a little bit. And then, of course, last part would be the power of those third-party review sites. A lot of people wonder, how do I get reviews? What do I do with these reviews? Um, you know, how do I get more reviews? You know, how do I deal with the bad reviews? What do I do with them? Don't want to have a mudslinging contest kind of thing. So I'm going to go over some of those things with you guys as well. So first things first. How do you keep up with Google's latest algorithm updates? Now, Google's algorithms need to be changed constantly. It's not something that is visibly public. It's not something that Google puts out there uh, and says, hey, this is our algorithm. This is how you can beat it. This is how you can work it. This is how you become, uh, can become number one. Um, the reason they do that is because, of course, there's thousands and thousands and thousands of business. I mean, and there's probably millions of business out there uh, on Google. And everyone wants to be number one. Everyone wants to be on the first page. Well, compared to a website that has a ton of content, it's extremely relevant, awesome media, everything is perfect with it, to another site that maybe just started that has nothing really on it, well, it wouldn't really be fair if everyone had the same equal chance of just being number one that way. So Google changes their algorithms constantly. Um, I'd probably be safe to say that they change it multiple times every single day. I believe last year they changed it a little bit over about maybe 500 times. Now, when I say they changed it, that doesn't mean that they're huge updates. I'm not talking about Hummingbird. I'm not talking about Pigeon, MobileGet, and any of that stuff. That's, those are large, huge updates, um, as well as new algorithms. I'm talking about tweaks, different things like that. Now, one way that you can obviously try to keep up to date with all of this stuff that's happening is to just make sure that you're not doing any of the black hat tactic stuff. The black hat things are uh, various things from keyword stuffing to duplicate content, copying content, plagiarism, those kind of things. That is the kind of stuff that, uh, you know, link farming, those kind of things, if you buy links just to have multiple links on your website, all those things are considered black hat. So you want to make sure that you aren't uh, doing all these things because that's for sure going to lessen your ranking. That's for sure going to just put you down in the gutter and nothing's going to help you in regards to all these newer uh, updates. So just to kind of give you a, a, a little idea, the Hummingbird update all right, gives Google search engine the ability to process the longer tail conversational type of uh, search queries. So if everyone's kind of familiar with the keyword aspect of things, originally it came out with AOL, AOL keywords, you know, you want to search for something, uh, you know, like auto mechanic, right? You want to search for uh, car mechanic or um, automobile repair or car repair, something like that, right? Well, things are a little bit different now. Things have kind of changed. Things have become a little more human-like and less robotic. And Google, um, and as well as other kind of search engines, are also kind of taking, uh, taking note of this because of the fact of you have different things like Siri you have, uh, on your phone. You have different things like Google Now. You have different things like Cortana for Microsoft phones. And what these are, these are mobile assistants. And a lot of times people, when they search for something, as you've probably seen, a lot of people that have iPhones, when they talk to... Um, uh, Siri, they ask Siri as if Siri is a real person. They talk to Siri, ask questions, longer conversations, phrases, things like that. So 
Siri, as well as Google, as well as other search engines, take that into consideration because people are on the go. People are probably walking, they're in the car, they're on their way to that destination. Maybe they want to know, what's the weather like? Or, you know, where's food locations near me? Or whatever it may be. So they need to kind of tweak their algorithm, and they have done so with the Hummingbird update. <clears throat> so what that has done is that has involved longer tail keywords, and what that means is basically instead of saying car mechanic, it could say something like uh, car repair in San Diego, or uh, you know, uh, car is making rattling sound, or whatever it may be, something where it's almost kind of symptom-like. Uh, for instance, if it's a chiropractor, you know, lower back pain, or sharp pain in my upper shoulder, something like that, where maybe that would be considered a longer tail search term so that someone can search for something and pull up a relevant content page that talks about that. Now, how do you actually optimize to, to work with that, to, to be able to optimize for that newest algorithm update? Well, to be honest, it's just making sure you kind of pull back on those keywords. It's making sure you pull back on using so many keywords in a piece of content, because when you actually stop and you step back and you look at your page of content, if it has automobile repair 20 times in a single paragraph, it sounds very robotic. And that's basically because we were trying to game the system to show, hey, I'm really relevant to these keywords, so please pull me up because look at how many times I mention it. Well, that causes a bad user experience. That causes people to not want to uh, read the page, even consider the business that they're looking into, and so they go somewhere else. Well, Google is all about user experience. They're all about making sure that you get the best user experience and the most relevant content available when you're searching for something. So that's basically why Hummingbird come out. Now, the reason for this topic is, of course, because of the custom content aspect. Now, having custom content on your website is extremely important because of the fact that it is pertaining to your practice. If you talk about a specific treatment, specific technique, a specific service, you want to make sure that you're talking about it as if you were verbally talking about it with a client, verbally talking about it with someone inquiring about that topic in your office or in your practice. So you want to make it just sound natural. It's, it, when you naturally talk to someone, you naturally have those keywords already embedded in there, and you naturally have these longer term type of phrases in there as well. Another thing that you also want to maybe consider is a lot of people ask about FAQ pages. Um, why do I need an FAQ page? Well, you need an FAQ page because people ask questions. That's what they always do. People don't come to you because they know everything. That's the, why, that's the reason they're coming to you, because they don't know. They don't know what to do, or they don't know how to fix it, or you're the only person that can actually help them. So they're going to have questions. So you can either have a single page that's just an FAQ page. It has all these different commonly asked questions, and you can get this from your front desk. Maybe you, you know yourself what uh, patients and clients ask for all the time. Put those in, in a single page. You know, Don't make it a 50-question FAQ page. Maybe make it 10, maybe 15 questions. But what I would personally do is I would actually kind of categorize those and put those in specific pages. So again, I'm going to use, a, uh, I'm gonna use a, a, a veterinarian as an example. Let's just say you have someone that asks questions about how do I um, how do I give my feline uh, medicine? Everyone knows with a cat, they're not the best to, to try to give anything to, really. Um, and so they like to do their own thing. They're very strong personalities. They like to kind of, you know, leave me alone, human. Um, don't touch me. Whereas dogs, maybe it's a little bit different. They let you kind of put them on their back and rub their bellies and stuff like that. So one of those things that people ask a lot of these questions about, maybe that's something you want to put on that particular page. Maybe you have a page about, uh, you know, how to trim your, your pet's uh, nails, their claws. Uh, maybe you might put a little question at the very top of that page, at the bottom of that page, saying, how do I, you know, do this, dot, dot, dot. And then putting a little bit of an answer below that, really short, but then that whole page itself will be relevant to that FAQ question. And so that way you have on each of those specific pages a specific FAQ that pertains to that content. And so what that does is that helps multiple aspects. You have those keywords involved in the page, you have the longer tail type of question phrase in there, and then overall the content itself will also be very relevant to that. So in addition to that, also the Panda update, which is another update. Um, Google loves these animal updates, uh, which penalizes websites without that quality, unique custom content, which kind of also ties in line with the Hummingbird aspect of it. So again, you want to make sure that you have that content available, that it is unique to your practice. A lot of times people like to uh, go to WebMD 
or they like to go to Wikipedia, which, to be honest, it's a completely complete no-no. I would say that's, in my personal opinion, that's black hat, even though it's not going to technically it would kind of affect your rankings. And the reason it would do so is because you're supposed to be the authority. You want to make sure that you are the person that knows everything about what this person wants to ask you. And the reason that they're going to you is because you are the expert. You are the professional. But if on your website you have a bunch of links and a bunch of copied content from Wikipedia or basically from WebMD, that's almost as if I was to go and open my own practice and have a bunch of books, how-to books and, you know, uh, dummy books or whatever you want to call them on how to work on things. If I was a dentist and I had you sitting in my chair and I had a book as I'm reading it on how to do a root canal, it would freak you out. You would you would get up out of your chair, you would leave, you say, okay, I don't even want to do this. And that's kind of what it looks like on the website. So that's why something that you want to really make sure you do is have that custom content available on your website. And if you don't have that custom content or you don't know how to do it and you say, I'm not a writer, that's perfectly fine. We definitely can help you out here. We have services for that. Or if you want to do it yourself, again, like I mentioned, just talk naturally and maybe have someone help you out and they can jot it down as you explain what each process is or each service is that you have that you want to have a page about. Um, it, again, you'll see how easy it is and it comes very, very naturally. Keyword stuffing is one of those things that I did mention that you want to make sure that you don't do, and if no one knows what keyword stuffing is, keyword stuffing uh, is basically the practice of, of including as many of those keywords on a web page as possible. Again, like I mentioned, having 20 keywords on a single paragraph is something you definitely don't want to do. Um, it's something that people think that they can manipulate search rankings with, and it definitely doesn't do that. It just actually hurts you, in, in a sense, because it doesn't make it relevant at all, and it's not a good user experience. Again, the duplicate content, you make sure that you do not have the same content on multiple pages. If you have multiple websites, do not copy content from each website over to the next, just to kind of show relevancy between the two websites. That's a big no-no. Even if it's your own content, you're copying your own content. You have to think of each domain, each website, as its own entity. And so each one has to be completely different. Um, everything's down from the name, address, and phone number. It should be completely different because if not, you're cannibalizing each website. You're basically taking whatever possibility of rankings from one site away from the other and vice versa. So if you have something that's similar on two websites and you don't want to copy content, keep in mind the rule of thumb is basically I think about 33% of it needs to be changed in order for it to not be considered duplicate content. So just basically kind of switch some things around. Maybe take the third paragraph and put it in the middle and, and change it up a little bit. You definitely want to change the content not just rearrange it, but make sure you do something like that so that way it's a little bit different. Again, it doesn't need to be the whole thing, it just needs to be about 30, 33% of it or so. And then again, last part of that content piece would be the title tags and the meta descriptions. These are all kind of the back end things. These are definitely important. And just to kind of give everyone an idea, title tags are really what your website visitors will see in their browser tab, as well as also what they'll be able to see when they see links in a Google search results page. So when you go to Google, you actually see all the different links showing up on the SERP or the search engine results page. Um, these are actually all title tags of that particular page. Now, a lot of people don't realize that when you see links on Google, it's not just the home page of your website. You actually have the capability of having multiple pages be seen on your website. And that actually works in your favor because you can then really dominate that first page. You can actually have up to three or four different pages of your website. So out of a 10 results page, maybe you own half of that and you really dominate that real estate. So that's actually really something that you need to think about. Um, it's, not always being about uh, it's not always about being number one, even though that's great. Um, if you are, let's say, number two or number three, but you own three or four or five different slots in that 10 slot part of the first page, I would say that's golden. That's way better than being just number one uh, because it shows how relevant your entire website is compared to what they're actually searching for. Uh, the meta descriptions are a little bit different. Again, those are the short descriptions that you'll see below those links. So when you actually go to a search results page after searching for something on Google, you'll see the main links, and then you'll see little descriptions of it in there as well. Now, those are going to be something that you definitely want to have at least some form of keyword in there for that particular page. So kind of think about how you want to have that put in there. A lot of times people put different CTAs or call to actions in there, you know, whether they want to put new patient special, maybe even their phone number, stuff like that. So kind of be creative with that. Just think of how you want to do that kind of stuff. And those 
are the kind of things that can constantly you know, be changed here and there. They don't have to be stagnant. So if you think of something and you want to change it down the line, it doesn't hurt. And if, if anything, it actually helps you out. Um, just so everyone knows, if you have a page of content on your website that you just don't like, I honestly say go ahead and change it up a little bit. Maybe switch up, add some stuff, take some things out. Google considers that as a refresh factor, and they do have a refresh factor in their algorithm where they want to make sure that your website's not stagnant. If you're constantly changing your website, that actually adds to your SEO. Now, I don't recommend doing it every single day, but at least recommend going into your website once a month and just kind of auditing it and just making sure everything's still relevant. If something changed, staff members left, whatever it may be, don't be apprehensive on changing stuff on your website. I definitely encourage it because that's something that you want to make sure that you are showing that you're active on the website. Google does not like having websites that have been sitting there for months and months and months, maybe even a year, and nothing's changed. Uh, because everyone else is trying to make sure that they're relevant and, and helping you out or helping them out. Next part is the mobile responsive website. Now, a lot of people aren't too sure what's the difference between mobile responsive and mobile friendly. Well, mobile friendly, if you think about it, there's two different options. There's mobile and then there's desktop. And that's really all it does is it kind of switches from mobile to desktop depending on what you're using. Mobile responsive, however, does respond uh, its size based on the device that you're using. So it can basically go from any size tablet, 10 inch, 12 inch, 8 inch, 7 inch, whatever, to your cell phone, 4 inch, 5 inch, whatever, to whatever size desktop you have. It will respond and it will move all the content and links and everything on the website according to that. Again, with a mobile friendly website, if you're kind of in a size on your device that's in between the two sizes that are available, or maybe three sizes that are available, um, it'll, it'll still possibly give you the option to scroll. Um, again, I recommend if you don't have any of these mobile friendly or mobile responsive and your website doesn't do any of that, I would honestly rather have mobile friendly than nothing at all. Um, in a perfect world, I would say mobile responsive is the best just because you can kind of have it match whatever size device you're using. If you're not too sure if your website's mobile responsive, a great test that you can do is if you open up your website, take the corner of your browser and just drag it so that it shrinks and grows the browser. And if you start to see your content start shifting in size so that it kind of rearranges itself, then it's most likely mobile responsive or it pretty much is mobile responsive. Um, if it doesn't do that, but it does do it when you shrink it all the way down and it finally collapses into a smaller view, um, then it's mobile friendly. And of course, if it doesn't do any of that at all, then you don't have either one. <laughs> so you want to make sure that if you don't have any of those, definitely give us a call. Uh, we want to make sure to, to reach out to every single client. Um, if we haven't reached out to every single client for that, definitely let us know. It's super simple and we can help you out with that. No problem at all. So one of the reasons that mobile responsive and mobile friendly is so important besides the aesthetics, besides the user experience, is because Google's latest and greatest algorithm, which doesn't have an animal name to it, they actually call it mobile get-in. And so the reason they call it mobile get-in is because of the fact that it has such a huge impact, Armageddon-like impact, on websites out there. And it's pretty much one of those uh, updates that I was mentioning before, not one of the many small tweaks that they do every day, but one of the large, big updates that they actually announce is coming um, and prepare for kind of thing. Um, it's one of those things that definitely affected a lot of websites out there. Now, it didn't affect them overnight. It didn't take you from page one to page 10 overnight, but it is now uh, one of those things where it is fact that Google is considering mobile-friendly websites to be a huge part, huge positive part of their algorithm change. And if you don't have a mobile-friendly or mobile-responsive website, they will actually start to penalize you. Uh, now, by penalizing, that doesn't obviously mean they're going to fine you or anything like that with your business. It just basically means that they're going to probably dock some points off of your algorithm ranking of your website and you'll start to slowly decline compared to those that actually have a mobile responsive or mobile friendly website. So think of algorithm changes, think of your overall uh, Google experience as kind of like a score. Um, so you either can get positive points or negative points and it's really kind of whoever has the most positive points. And that's why there's so many factors of a Google algorithm that you need to take into effect uh, because of the fact that there's so many of them, there's not just one silver bullet um, that you have to kind of take all these little things into account because all the little points add up to your total score. Now, you don't have an idea what the score is, but that's just a, a, an easy way for me to kind of explain it to you guys. Another thing is you want to make sure you have that simple navigation. You want to make sure that you have um, everything laid out on your website, that simple, clean layout, clear, clickable call to action, uh, 
you know, appointment, schedule an appointment today, call now, like those kind of buttons are available and clear because when they're on their mobile device and they want to go ahead and click on it, they don't want to have something like what I have sometimes, fat finger syndrome, and I click on multiple things because they're too tiny. You want to make sure it's at least large enough for someone's fingers to be able to click on to be able to schedule an appointment with you. So again, if you have any questions on that mobile content, anything related about that, feel free to type it out. And again, I will make sure to answer that towards the end. Uh, but I do want to go ahead and go on to the next topic, which is paid advertising campaigns. Now, paid advertising campaigns are something that can definitely help you out tremendously and things that could kind of put you in the hole if you don't know what you're doing. Um, it is fairly expensive. It is one of those things that is paid to play. And uh, a lot of times people just don't really uh, understand how it works. And it, there's a good reason for that. Um, I am certified through AdWords. Um, it isn't an, an easy thing to do. It does take a lot of studying and a lot of uh, tests to do. Uh, but there are multiple, multiple versions of Google certification just because of the fact that there's uh, search certifications, there's AdWords certifications, there's uh, display uh, certifications. There's just tons of different certifications because everything has so much uh, involved in it. So you want to make sure that if you are trying to do PPC yourself, that you either read up on it or you get some kind of consultation uh, from someone that is actually certified and that knows what they're talking about to kind of help you out. Or feel free to go ahead and give us a call. Again, we'll help you out with that. So just to kind of start off, one thing you want to make sure and, and kind of know is that nearly 65% of people click on sponsored ads when they're actually searching for a service or product online. And reason being is because it's at the very, very top of the search results page. And if you aren't too sure what those look like, it's at the very top, usually the, the first two or maybe three um, that are kind of beige. They usually have a little teeny tag on it that says add. And then on the very far right, you'll just see a bunch of results that kind of stream all the way down. There's about maybe seven or so results. Uh, again, there's 10 total, so the three on top and the seven on the right. Um, those are actually also paid as well. Now, those are uh, different depending on each page, and they work kind of in the same sense as normal organic SEO works on a, on a regular search engine results page, except for the fact that instead of uh, it being organic, of course, you're paying for it. So even though organic searches really result in more clicks than paid search advertising, a really well-crafted paid advertisement is, is pretty much a great alternative to getting your practice on the first page of Google's results page. Um, just so people can really find you. And again, it's one of those things where you don't have to wait a few months for your SEO to kind of SEO juices to start marinating. It's something where it's really, like I said, pay to play. It's uh, like eBay. It's off of a, an auction type system. And it's one of those things where if you really want to get on the first page, you can definitely pay to get on the first page as long as you have everything set in motion, all your campaigns are set correctly, and everything, if your landing pages and all that stuff is good to go. And that's the biggest issue a lot of people have is they, they start paying for these things without actually having anything for these clients and these uh, prospects to fall back on. You need to make sure you have a landing page. You need to make sure you have contact information. If you have a special, you want to make sure that that special is ready to go and everyone in your office is ready to tackle it when someone calls in or when someone fills out a form to be contacted. Another thing is making sure that everyone in your office is alert at these, that they treat them as hot, hot leads. Because these are people that are filling something out or they're clicking on a number to call you. And if you don't help them out right away or get them an appointment right away, they're going to go to the very next one. I guarantee it. So you want to make sure that everyone's aware of it and that they know. Um, and if you need to, you can set up like a call tracking number um, to be able to track it differently compared to people that go to your website and have a, uh, your main number on the website. So a couple things that I want to kind of go over. Again, we're going to talk about longer tail keywords. Uh, it's definitely something that's not foreign to PPC. It's something that works both on organic and paid advertising. Uh, you want to use those longer tail keyword phrases. You want to target someone who's uh, further into the decision making process and really kind of considering the cost or maybe the benefits of that specific service. Um, really rather than targeting someone who's gathering just general information and not really ready to make that decision. So reason being is because with simple little words, simple keywords, that's people that are usually kind of researching people that are kind of just looking around, just browsing, they're not really ready for anything yet, um, as opposed to those people that have a lot more questions. Think of a car dealership. You know, someone, let's just, let's just picture someone that uses simple words or basic keywords as someone that doesn't talk to anybody. They don't go, they go to a car dealership, they're just looking around, 
they don't talk to, you know, they get greeted by a sales rep. They're like, no, I'm okay. I'm just looking. They don't ask any questions, you know, what's this engine have? What features does this car have? They don't ask anything. They just go there because they're browsing. As opposed to, let's just say, the longer tail keywords, the longer phrase or the question type keywords are those people that go to that dealership asking questions about features and what does this have and what does this model do that that one doesn't and all these different things. They're more in tune to actually want to buy. They're in that buying decision state of mind. So that's basically why you want to target the longer tail keywords, those complete thoughts, those questions, because that's going to be, one, less competition for you. Again, it's, it's kind of like an auction, like eBay. And two, it's also going to help to get those people that want to actually uh, have a buying decision. Another thing you want to do is you want to update your keyword list. Now, again, keywords are still a factor. But again, you want to ha incorporate them in those longer tail phrases. And before you set up your PPC campaign for the very first time, you want to make sure that you do your proper research. So make sure that when you're looking at uh, different keywords, you, they have a keyword tool in AdWords. Um, you can actually see how much competition there is for that keyword. And the reason I keep saying that is because there's other businesses out there, just like yours, trying to search and trying to be on the very top of Google for the same exact keyword. Um, if it's a basic keyword, I'm sure everyone's using that. That's why the competition is very, very high. Um, if you can kind of look at the first graph here uh, where it says use longer tail keywords, that's kind of a, a perfect example of it. You know, when you have simple keywords, that everyone's trying to use it. But when you have something that's a little longer, something that is, is probably less known because it's, it's a longer tail keyword, it's more of a phrase, you don't have to fight against other people for that one spot. So when someone types that in, you have a greater chance of being on top. Uh, once your PPC ad campaign is set up, though, you want to make sure to continually refine that keyword to really kind of avoid missing any valuable low-cost keywords that really drive those patients to your site. So again, it's not a set it and forget it. It's one of those set it and maybe look at it a little bit later kind of situations. And you want to make sure that you kind of just go back and you audit things and just make sure it's still performing. Because again, just like I said, and I'll keep saying it, it's just like eBay, you bid on an item, you don't walk away from it thinking that you won. There's someone else that's going to go and outbid you. And then you bid again, and they're going to outbid you again. So that's basically why AdWords is so time consuming sometimes is because you could be at the very top spot, and you're like, yeah, I'm number one, or I'm, I'm in the top three spots. I'm the very top of the page. Look at me. And then you look at it a couple days later, and you're at the very bottom. <laughs> and you're wondering why. Well, it's because there's someone right across the street or across the states or whatever it may be that's trying to do the same exact thing. Another thing you want to do is matching. So matching is something where they have uh, different ways of actually helping you to refine exactly what you want people to search for. If you have, let's say, a specific keyword and you want to have it be an exact match, that basically means that you want exactly what that person, that keyword is to be when someone searches for that exact keyword, that's when you want it to be relevant to what you have. Then you have broad as well. And broad is kind of something where it, it, it kind of has it kind of in the, the, the name in itself. It's, it's broad in a sense that like it kind of has the relevance to what you're looking for in the keyword or whatnot. And there's phrase, which basically is almost kind of like the longer tail keywords, but it just really says, OK, I want this to be in kind of a phrase conversation of what they're looking for. Now, phrase matching isn't too bad. Um, I've actually had a lot of success with that as well. But depending on the keywords, uh, having a broad um, phrase or an exact match really kind of will determine that as well. So. Last part of that, again, leveraging those extensions and exclusions. So if you don't know what those extensions are, extensions are a nice little tool that you can use uh, on the uh, pay-per-click ad itself. So imagine this. You have a pay-per-click ad. Let's say it's number one. It's at the very top. But then you notice that there's a couple links right below it. Now, this isn't always just for pay-per-click ads. I've also seen it in normal organic search results. And maybe a lot of people wonder, how is it that they had their their website link uh, on the search results page, but then there's four different links below it going to the About Us and to this service and the Contact Us and whatnot. How do they do that? Those are extensions. Those are ad extensions. And there's different ways that you can actually utilize them. Um, ad extensions are actually ways that it can increase your online visibility by adding the real estate to it. And different things from having a uh, uh, call, like a, a click to call ad extension where it has your phone number and all they have to do is they click on that link and it opens up their mobile device's phone um, dialer and then basically you can just hit send as opposed to if you're walking down the street or you're in the car and you're searching for something and it makes you go to the website and then you have to get the phone number, you have to write it down somehow, but you can't put it, uh, 
invalid in your phone because you're using your phone to search. So it causes all these different messes. So a click to call uh, ad extension is perfect because they don't have to do any of that. They can just see the ad and, oh, yes, that's what I want. They click on it, opens up their mobile phone device's uh, dialer, um, and then they can just dial from there. There's also ways of doing uh, specific page uh, sitemap kind of extensions where if you want to you know, have three or four different uh, services really highlighted in that in that ad, you can definitely do that as well. Maybe they're really high paying, high dollar um, services that you really want to kind of start promoting to build that revenue. That's something you can do as well. So that way it just directly takes them to that specific page as opposed to them clicking on the ad, going to your, ho your uh, home page, searching for things that they want. Even though you want that, you really kind of want to make it as easy as possible for them because you have to keep in mind people aren't sitting perfectly at home on their desktop like what we everyone used to do um, and they're not taking their time really looking at things. Now that still happens but I'd say about 80% of the time if not more people are probably on their mobile device or their, uh, their iPad or their tablet and they're on the go and they're looking for something quick. Everyone in this webinar is in the uh, industry to help people, um, help people, help their pets, help themselves, whatever it may be. And a lot of times we would love to have it to where people can plan ahead on these things. But there's a lot of times more than, than, than not where people are on the go and they're like, I need to schedule an appointment this week. I need to go see my doctor. I need to go see the dentist. I need to go take my pet tomorrow. It's an emergency, whatever it may be. And they're on the go and they're doing it to where they're not at a desktop computer. So all these things, all these extensions definitely help the experience and help them to get to you quicker or to schedule an appointment quicker so that they can get into your office quicker okay so with those things you want to definitely make sure that you have all those in place and if you aren't too sure how to do that it's very simple in AdWords we can definitely help you out with that as well but again if you are looking to do it on your own ad extensions is what you want to look into that is definitely something that's going to help out and of course exclusions are a way that you can actually exclude specific uh, you know keywords or whatnot you can put negative keywords in there things that you don't want people to basically uh, search pull you up by you know so um, those are definitely important um, for instance you know let's say you want to put you know low cost care for your pet or low cost uh, frames you know uh, eyeglass frames or whatever as opposed to the word cheap a lot of times people like to use that as a negative keyword because they don't want to be considered or even relevant to the word cheap because it makes it sound like their service is cheap and it's not good uh, a lot of times people type that in. You know, that's just how people talk sometimes. They just type that in. But you can have it to where your website is sure to not pull up by that. And so that would be uh, kind of like a negative keyword. Make sure you don't pull up in those aspects. One thing you want to make sure you also do is you want to make sure that you help increase your quality score. So <clears throat> quality score is something that is definitely important. Uh, quality score is something that is hard to kind of maintain because of the fact that it incorporates a lot of different things uh, into your website, whether it's the landing page, um, different things like that. And what you want to make sure and do is with the quality score, that incorporates everything from your landing page to the content to basically wherever this ad is taking you. So the quality score is really kind of how relevant is this link or this ad to what someone is searching for. If I had someone searching for, again, I'm going to use auto mechanic because it's just arbitrary, someone's searching for car repair, and they click on the link, and it takes them to a pizza shop, they're going to think, do I get pizza with my auto repair? What's going on with this? So that's going to be something that is going to make your quality score be extremely low. And so the higher the quality score, the better your cost per click, uh, meaning it's going to be cheaper, the higher you're going to rank compared to other people as well, and overall, it's just going to help you out, and it's going to make it cheaper, and it's going to make it a lot easier for you to get to the top spot with that. So you want to make sure that you definitely try to make sure your your, uh, your quality score is as high as possible, and it's on a scale from 1 to 10. So if it's not a 10, don't worry. That's that's extreme case awesome. You know, if, I mean, if you're like in a 7 or 8 or something like that, that's awesome as well. Uh, but don't, don't fret if it's too low. Keep in mind that you might even still be on the top spot, and you might have a quality score of like 4. Um, so it's just really kind of one of those things where you just want to make sure that you are staying above water as much as possible and not doing any, again, black hat tactics, um, redirecting people to the wrong content. You want to make it as relevant as possible and always remember the user experience itself. Also, what you want to do is you want to make sure that you have separate ad campaigns for each service you offer. You don't want to do something where in AdWords itself you have one ad campaign for every single different service 
because you're not going to have keywords and long-term, uh, long-tail keyword phrases that's going to match every single service. So this is going to be definitely one of those things where you can have multiple different uh, campaigns running for each different service you offer because you can tweak it to be individual to that specific service. And of course, you know, ad groups are also another important thing. If you want to put things in different categories, different ad groups to make sure that you maintain uh, segmentation, also making sure that you have better eye on everything. That way, if you need to pause a specific ad group because it's not working as well, it doesn't affect everything else. Um, you want to make sure to categorize these things as much as possible. So that way, it kind of helps out with the whole process. So. Okay, so we have a couple questions. I'm going to go ahead and save those towards the end just, uh, just because so we can make sure to get um, along with this uh, webinar, but definitely some good questions on quality score. I want to make sure to kind of touch up on. Um, next part is, of course, social media. Social media is definitely something that you want to make sure that you keep up to date. You want to keep relevant. It's nothing that you want to kind of just let sit there and um, grow stagnant on. You want to make sure that you have everything available uh, on your website for social media itself. So of course that means definitely have a Facebook page, Google Plus page, a Twitter page. If you don't have any of those, I definitely recommend for sure, for sure have a Facebook page. Um, there's at least a billion people on that thing and I'm sure they are doing it for a reason. So um, everything from bus stops to the side of bill to billboards to news channels to radio stations, anything and everything, even the United States, uh, the President of the United States, has, has their, they have their own Twitter. I mean everyone has uh, uh, social media of some aspect because it's so widely used. It's such a great tool. It's free PR. I mean, it's a way to reach thousands of people, tons of people um, for free. You know, all it really takes is time. And I know time is money, but again, it's better than having to pay for this service and to waste your time doing it. So definitely it's one of the things that you want to make sure you uh, keep relevant and you want to make sure that you have it up to date. And again, by doing that, by keeping it up to date, it's one of those things that will definitely help uh, overall on your business. Now, keeping up to date is something as easy as posting on Facebook maybe once a week, um, having that also direct to your Twitter, uh, maybe having blogs on your website that go directly to your Facebook, so it kills one bird uh, with two birds with one stone, sorry. Um, and then also having all that available on your website, making sure that you have uh, easy access to all of that. You want to make sure that everything is incorporated on your website for your social media in regards to if you have special services on your website, make sure that's on your social media. If you have specific uh, news that you need to let everyone know about, maybe there was a storm that really kind of shut down uh, the main road to your, web, uh, to your practice, let everyone know on uh, Facebook. Let everyone know on your website. It's one of those things that you definitely want to make sure that you let everyone know because they are on Facebook and Twitter and Google Plus all the time, and that's a great way to do it. They will also, also ask questions all the time. And so how does this really kind of affect your SEO? That's probably the big question. What does this do for my website, really? I mean, social media is great. There's a lot of memes, a lot of pictures, interactivity. How does that make me money, though? That's a big question. Well, a lot of times people don't understand why and how it works. And really, to be honest, I mean, it, it kind of goes deeper into just revenue, deeper into just patience immediately. Um, it's also kind of a psycho, uh, the psychology of it all. Uh, people feel like they want to refer business to you, to another business, if they feel like they're taken care of. They want to feel like they um, have a good experience there. So obviously the client experience, the customer experience is number one. And then two, they want to make sure that you, know, you are up to date with everything that's going on and that you are treating them more than just a number. If they are on social media, it's more than likely because they're being social, they want to take a break from work real quick or take a break from whatever they're doing and just kind of you know, brain dump on social media real quick. And if they see you posting a, something funny or relevant or maybe a nice five tips on how to do this or don't do this for the summer or whatever it may be, to really kind of help them and benefit them, they're going to look at you as more than just, a, you know, someone that wants their credit card or their money. They're going to look at you as someone that they can go to for help and with assistance and helping their overall wellness. Um, and what they're going to do is they're going to actually reach out to their friends and their family and they're going to promote your business because they had such a great user experience. And the way they do that on social media is basically the way it works is friends of fans or friends of family. So what happens is whenever you post something on social media, whether it's uh, something about a service, a uh, special offer, maybe you guys have an event happening this weekend like a barbecue, you want to encourage people to come on by, um, whatever it may be, if someone interacts with that, 
content, if they like it, if they share it especially, if they comment on it, what happens is that ends up going on their news feed uh, for all of their friends and their family. So let's say I have a thousand friends and family right on Facebook and I go to your practice and you post something and I like it. It's a great article or it's a funny picture or whatever it may be. Um, I like it or I comment on it or I share it on my page. All the thousand people that I have on my friends and family list are going to be able to see that now in their feed because they follow me. Even without you having no connection to them at all, they're going to be able to see any kind of interaction that I have. And what that does is it adds a couple things. One, a lot of people love reviews. A lot of people think, okay, I want to have as many reviews as possible. But when you're actually looking for a business online and you look at the review system, they help out definitely. But would you rather take a, a, a let's say, a four star review from a uh, random person, you know, that you don't even know? Maybe. But would you? take it from someone that's a friend, personal friend or family member, and they said, you know what, this place is horrible. Do not go there. I had the worst experience ever. Honestly, they'd probably take the friend or family uh, member's opinion over the person that gave it a four or five star review that did, they don't even know about because they trust that person more than just someone that's random. So that's kind of what this social media does. When someone promotes your business online or they start interacting with you, they say, you know what, I've been meaning to go to the chiropractor. You know what, I've been meaning to get my eyes checked. I need to actually do that. They're going to go to their friends and family first and say, who do you recommend? And then, of course, if that person or myself recommends you, that's a referral. That's easy. And, again, that turns into revenue. So, again, social media is extremely important. It's not one of those things that's going to get you money quick overnight. It's going to be something that's going to help with the longevity of your business, and it's going to help to grow your business in different ways that you didn't think of because of the fact that you're reaching out to people that you never had contact with before, and you have a little army of people that are your fans, your current clients that like your page and interact with your page that are actually helping you to promote. So they're helping you promote your business to these people that could be potential prospective clients. So never downplay social. It's very, very important. And it's one of those things that you always want to make sure that you keep up to date. I do definitely recommend at least post once a week. Uh, you want to have multiple posts a month because what happens is you got to imagine this. If I have a thousand people on my friends list, which I don't, but let's just say I have a thousand people on my friends list, and I'm on Facebook, let's say every day, multiple times a day, which most people are, I'm looking at my feed go down, and if every one of those people are posting, or even half of those people are posting on the daily, or even in a week, that's 500 things I'm looking at in a given week. So you want to make sure you post at least a few times a week if you can. Again, minimum, I definitely recommend you don't post less than a, uh, once a week just because of the fact that um, you don't want to get buried in all those other posts that people are posting. So that's definitely something that you want to consider when you're doing those kind of things. Now, there are different times that you can post. There are different data that does show in general that most people do check their social media between 1 p.m. and 3 p.m. throughout the week. Um, again, engagement's really highest on a Thursday and maybe a Friday, although it does really vary depending on which industry you're in and which social media platform you're also on. And there's been little research on the number of posts you should make per week, but again, we do recommend doing multiple posts uh, per week. If you want to do it once a day, that's perfectly fine as well, just to kind of keep top of mind of everyone. Uh, but make sure you don't do it any less than that, because that's going to kind of make it seem like you guys are just not there anymore. Um, you know, it's almost kind of like if you think of any brand out there that you can possibly think of, and I'm just going to pick a random one, um, Pepsi, okay? I don't remember, I, I, and I, I think this is actually real. I don't remember the last time I've seen a Pepsi commercial. Now, it doesn't mean Pepsi's going out of business, but you start to think, well, what happened to Pepsi? You know, what's going on? Um, now, I'm sure everyone's seen Pepsi commercials out there, anyways, but a lot of times there's probably old products that you have loved in the past that aren't out anymore, and you start thinking about it. I, you know what? That's right. I haven't seen a commercial about it in quite some time. Well, that's usually kind of what people start thinking when they don't see that person anymore, or they don't see that business anymore online or on TV or whatever it may be. Their initial instinct is uh, maybe they went out of business, or maybe something bad happened. What happened, you know? So they start thinking all these negative things. So you want to make sure that you let people know, hey, we're still here, we're keeping up to date, we're active, how are you doing, that kind of thing. And if someone leaves a comment on your page, interact with them. Definitely interact with them. Make it look like they're not talking to a robot or a blank wall. Make it make them feel like there's someone else on the other end of there, and that's definitely going to help out. And, of course, making sure it's on your website is a huge, huge piece. You want to make sure that people understand that, and you want to make sure that it is something that 
is available widely and clearly on your website, whether it's at the top or on one of the side modules, is definitely going to help out as well. Social media strategy, again, like I mentioned, it will improve your ranking because it will help to get people onto your website. And the way it does that is it helps to increase the amount of people that you reach out to. And also, if you have specific specials or articles that are coming from your website that you post onto uh, Facebook or uh, uh, Twitter or Google+, Plus, it's going to require them to click on it, and then they're going to be on your website, which more page views, longer page visits, those kind of things all in turn help with your search engine ranking. And uh, again, it's designed to help website ranking uh, increase. It's, helped to, it's designed to help you increase your search engine results uh, by doing that, becoming more relevant, more social, having more people on your website, that's definitely in the end going to help out with all of that. So again, it will, web, it will rank your website higher if it is a popular and a credible source. It's one of those things where it will also rank you by the number of backlinks uh, your website receives. You know, if you definitely have one of those things uh, where you have a lot of uh, blogs on your website and it links directly to your Facebook page. That definitely helps out as well because it's custom content, it's relevant content, and definitely, definitely will help people to go from Facebook or that social media page to your website and help increase those rankings. But it will also see that you have a bunch of links of people that are clicking on those links to get to your website. So it all adds to that relevancy and uh, definitely will help out when um, uh, when you actually have those articles on there uh, with your ranking as well. Google Plus is a big one as well. So Google Plus is something that a lot of people don't understand. Um, how does that actually help out and why is Google Plus even relevant? Google Plus definitely is one of those things where it took a little while for it to kind of take flight. A lot of people were uh, kind of skeptical about it and, and for good reason. You know, it's not Facebook, it's not the same, it, it, it just, it's not the same, you know. Well, Google actually, I mean, as, as everyone knows, Google has a ton of apps. I mean, they own YouTube, okay, for first, uh, for, for one thing. Um, another thing is they have Gmail, uh, Google Docs. Um, I mean, they've got all these different tools to use, and they put it all conveniently into one login. They've got Google Chrome, where you can actually have it to where you're automatically logged in. And the biggest, biggest, biggest piece that a lot of people just have no idea about, maybe you do, hopefully you do, is a Google phone. If you don't have an iPhone, you more than likely have an Android phone. And if you have a Microsoft phone, I'm sorry, but <laughs> no, but uh, uh, but uh, on the real, uh, Google phones are awesome devices. I love Google phones, whether, whatever phone you have, cheers to you. But for Google phones, the reason it's such a big thing is because iPhones are one phone, one operating system, Apple, OS, that's it. Google took a little different route whether it was a smart route, smart route or not, they took the software route. And so what that means is their Android uh, operating system is really what powers multiple, multiple, multiple phones. LG phones, Samsung phones, pretty much any phone you can think of out there. A lot of phones have Android software. They basically went the route that Microsoft went when Apple came out. Apple came out with the route of, we're gonna build hardware, the Macintosh. We're going to build these devices that everyone wants. Microsoft decided they initially wanted to try to do that, but then they ended up saying, you know what? What does every computer need? They need an operating system. Let's build Windows. Let's build the operating system. And that's basically what made them take over. Every device now, whether it's a Dell or Compaq, Lenovo, whatever it may be, HP, they all run Windows, unless it's obviously a Mac. Um, or for those techies out there, it could be anything else, Linux, whatever, Pi, whatever you have. So um, it's one of those things where when you have your phone and you're searching on your phone, on your, on your web browser on your phone, you're automatically signed in. And what that means for Google Plus is whenever you are signed in on uh, Google and you're searching for something, it's going to give you personalized results. And what that means is it goes based off of anyone that you have uh, on your friends list or in your circles, I should say, in Google Plus. Um, anything that's relevant to what you've searched for in the past, what people liked before, um, it'll actually personalize and completely change your search results page based off of that. So that's definitely one of those things that you want to consider with Google Plus and why you need to have Google Plus uh, incorporated into your social media uh, piece because it does definitely target those people that are signed in to Google for those personalized results. So last but not least, 
portion, of course, is the leveraging of the power of third-party review sites. How do I get reviews? What do I do with these reviews? What do I do with these bad reviews? Well, reviews of your business are important if you want to rank well on the search engine results page. Um, why is that? Well, a lot of times people don't realize, you know, how, how does that help out with anything? Well, little factoid, did you know that 88% of consumers have read reviews to determine the quality of a local business? Again, like I mentioned before, same thing when it comes to reviews on social media, same thing when it comes to reviews on Angie's, uh, Angie's List, um, Super Pages, City Search, um, forgetting big ones, Yelp, I don't know why I forgot that one, Yelp, uh, Google Business, those kind of things. Um, people really determine that kind of stuff, whether it's a friend and family or if it's someone that's random. And uh, online reviews are really thought to make up probably 10% of how Google and other search engines really decide to rank those search results. Um, they take review quality, diversity, velocity into consideration really when they're determining how your website will rank on those pages. So review, reviews, sorry, I'm having a hard time saying reviews of your business are not only important in helping visitors make the decision to use your services, but they're also important if you want to rank well on those results pages. So why is it that these reviews matter so much for a local business? Why should I care? Why should anyone care really what these reviews mean? Um, how is it going to help out my rankings? Well, a local business's online reviews are really oftentimes that deciding factor on whether a potential client's going to give that business their, hand, uh, their hard-earned dollars or really not. Um, local business can really th thrive on that local optimization and really kind of came far from it from what it used to be in the past. So how does it help out? Well, NAP, for instance, name, address, phone number, is definitely an important factor. You want to make sure that that is consistent across the board on all your uh, your review sites, as well as your website. You want to make sure that your name is the same across the board, your address is the same, and your phone number is the same across the board. Um, another thing that you also want to make sure that you do uh, is you want to make sure that if you have any good reviews, that you thank those people. Let them know that they're being heard. You appreciate their business. If someone has a bad review on your website, Absolutely, absolutely do not get into a mudslinging contest with them. That shows bad form, unprofessionalism. People will look down on that, and they will definitely turn to another business uh, for, for their hard-earned cash. Uh, what you want to do for those situations, you want to make sure that you, first and foremost, do your research. If someone is accusing your business of something, shady tactics, something like that, look back and kind of just review if you can find that patient or that client. Look back, look at the history of, of their experience with you guys figure things out, talk to people in your office if they remember this person, just get the real story out first, and then reach out to that person via the review, and just let them know, you know, that be apologetic. Let them know that you are really sorry for this experience that they've, that they've had, you want to correct it, you want to rectify it, feel free to come on in, you know, we'll definitely take care of you personally, here's the number, or stop on into the office, we'll take care of you. If they continue to bash on you, continue to bash on you, you can probably try again apologetic and just let them know, hey, we've tried to res resolve this, this is what we've offered, we do apologize, this is our policy, blah, 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 and that's it. And again, if they, for a third time, go at you again, leave it. Do not get into a mudslinging contest whatsoever. I've seen multiple businesses go out and basically just get into a slinging contest with them, and it looks so bad. It looks unprofessional. It looks immature, to be honest. And I've seen businesses like that, and I'm like, you know what? I think I'll go somewhere else. I'm not going to get in between this little cat fight, you know. So definitely show professionalism, show maturity as a business, and show the fact that you want to help them out. But as much as the customer is always right, there's times where I'm, I'm sorry to say, but there's times where clients will just keep digging because they want something free or they know they're wrong, and they're just digging on it and digging on it because they hold on to that the customer is always right mentality. And this probably goes against the grain of everyone, uh, I'm hoping not, um, out there. But sometimes, I mean, it, sometimes they're not. You know, sometimes it's one of those things where you need to help them out as much as possible. But if it gets into something where it's completely against your policy, you have the right to change your policy at any time. Um, and in any way am I not condoning the fact of, you know, that they're not right. But what I am saying is the fact that you want to make sure that it doesn't do something to where it's going to detrimentally hurt your business by helping out this one client. You need to somehow meet them in the middle, work with them a little bit, but don't completely bend backwards to where it's, and I'm being extreme with this, it's gonna bankrupt you, or it's gonna do something to where you're gonna legally get in trouble because this client really wanted it. You wanna make sure that you help them out as much as possible, but the biggest piece of this is the fact that you want to be seen 
as being helpful. You want to be seen by them and other prospective clients that you are willing to help accommodate them in any way that you can, that you've done everything that you can, that you've exhausted your resources to try to help them out, and unfortunately, you can't help them out in a worst-case scenario. Other times, you might reach out to them and, and respond to these reviews, and it actually turns out being great, and they retract the original bad review, or and or they actually will add a new review about, you know what, these guys took care of me, I'm changing my review to a four or five star review. I've seen that actually happen more times than not. So keep that in mind when you're actually looking to possibly help out uh, your business with these review sites. Um, and remember the big hitters, Google Business, uh, Yelp, and um, why am I drawing a blank here? Angie's List, those kind of things. These are all big ones that a lot of times people tend to leave a lot of uh, reviews on. And you want to make sure that you keep that in mind. Okay, so we're gonna get, we have a lot of questions here, so I want to make sure and get through them because we are running out of time here. I don't want to hold everyone to it. I do appreciate everyone uh, taking the time to really uh, listen in on this webinar. Hopefully you took some, some awesome nuggets of information out. There's a lot to talk about. And again, before we get into these questions, we will have this recorded. It will be on our YouTube channel uh, within this week. We will also reach out to everyone that did register and attend and send you an email with that. Uh, if you have any questions that you'd like to go further in depth on outside of this webinar, feel free to please give us a call. Um, definitely, if you want to, you can wait for that email. We will have a form attached. You can feel free to fill out that form. We will have someone contact you at a convenient time. Uh, but I do want to let everyone know <clears throat> that if you do, for everyone that has attended and has registered, we are offering 50% off of our initial setup for our Dominator service. And again, if you aren't sure what that is, that is our all-in-one package that offers everything from social media, basically everything that we talked about today, social media to your basic SEO to advanced SEO to video, also to pay-per-click advertising. You will have a, a single uh, account manager that is Google certified taking over your AdWords PPC and your SEO. Complete package, definitely help you out if you don't have the time because overall, all this stuff takes time and it's all about time management. So if you'd rather be working on your business and your patients and your clients, let us handle all the heavy work. Um, if not, again, give us a call. We can definitely give you a consultation on each one of these individual steps. Maybe you're awesome at social media, maybe you're awesome at SEO, but you just don't understand PPC. Again, give us a call and we can help you out with each individual topic. So let me go ahead and go into some of these questions. Again, I do appreciate it. Let's see what we got first and foremost. Quick question, so this is a little off topic, but definitely a, a good one. Is this an Audible webinar only? Uh, no, uh, obviously, hopefully you were able to see uh, the screen on, on that everyone else is able to see. Again, if you want to check it out at a later time, it's on our YouTube channel or will be on your YouTube channel later this week. Um, how do you access your quality score? Good question. So when you're actually in your ad campaign uh, in AdWords, it actually will have your, your quality score towards the right in one of the columns. Um, if you don't see it, there is actually an option right above where you can actually add more columns or reduce the amount of columns that you want to see, um, and quality score is actually one of them. So you can actually have that in there, and it'll, again, be a scale of 1 to 10. I think it's actually a 0. I don't even know if 0 is the lowest. I think it is. Um, but usually 1 is like the lowest it'll go, uh, but 1 to 10 usually in scale there. So that'll basically tell you what it is, and it'll kind of give you a little description. And really, honestly, for PPC, for everyone here, um, with Google, the great thing with them, because you know they are Google, anytime you hover over something, especially in AdWords or even analytics, analytics is its own beast. So I mean, uh, cheers to those that are analytics certified because that's gotten more and more complicated as we go throughout the years. But if you hover over things, that actually shows a little description of what it does and what it means. And sometimes it has a little help link or like a read more link where you can click on it and it takes you to uh, their support page that explains it even more in depth. So they give you all the tools. Again, it's just the time that it takes for you to actually sit there and read all that and learn it and everything else. So um, yeah, definitely you want to take a look at that, and it should show up on, on the right side of those columns when you have all your keyword lists available in your ad campaign. Good question. I will likely be moving my practice location. How will that affect my Google ranking, and how might it affect third-party review sites? Perfect question. Okay. So with that, that's a great question because all the review sites, and I'm glad that you mentioned the review sites because a lot of people don't realize how that ties into it. Name, address, phone number is 
very important. NAP. If you ever hear anyone talk about NAP, those are the three most important things that you need to make sure are consistent across all your search, uh, your SEO, PPC, whatever it may be. Okay. Reason being is because think of it like having uh, like yellow yellow pages. Yeah, I guess it would be like yellow pages. Um, it may be even not. I'll just stick with it. So think of it like that. And let's say you don't create any kind of profile. You don't even put your, your phone number or your info in, in there, um, your business the phone number or whatever it is in there. More than likely, it's probably already in there. And you're like, oh, okay. You know, it's in the, in the book itself. Um, the same thing happens with these profiles. So if you have different profiles out there, or let's say someone is trying to find you on one of these third-party sites and they can't find you, so they try to leave a review, they type it in, it'll more than likely create one for you. You might actually have five or six Yelp profiles that you didn't even know about. So first and foremost, of course, is to clean that up. Um, there's different ways of doing that. Again, we can help you out. It's a little bit longer conversation than, than I'm able to give with this question. Uh, but again, it's one of those things where you want to make sure that it's all consistent. Now, with moving your practice, all you need to make sure to do is, will it affect your rankings? you might see a slight little dip. It's really not going to be something that's going to be a, a huge thing. Again, the reason being is because you want to make sure it is consistent across the board with all your, your website, uh, your, your review sites. You want to make sure that all that is changed accordingly. Um, and as long as that happens, it will slowly kind of transition it over. The biggest thing that really affects your website ranking is your actual URL, your web address. If you change that out of nowhere, um, that's something that definitely can change big time if you decide, oh, I just want a new web address. I'm going to change my, uh, to a new web address from the one that I've had for 10 or 12 years. Bad idea. Um, Google actually likes domains, website domains that have age to them. That it's like a wine, you know, like a cheese. Um, even though, you know, uh, it might taste better with, with the newer one, um, it's actually the ones that have been long, around longer that actually help out um, your ranking a lot more. So as long as you keep those things consistent, um, you want to make sure that uh, you have all that stuff in line and it is consistent across the board. Might see a slight dip, but that's about it. Here's another question. Let's see. Perfect question. I am really glad, and I'm surprised no one asked that. I'm going to read this whole question because I'm sure this is a concern, and as well as it should be. Here's the concern. This is a big concern that no one at iMatrix has been able to answer clearly. Since one of the benefits of iMatrix services includes providing content for specific industries, eliminating the need for us to write our own content, i.e. chiropractic websites, and iMatrix uses the same content for multiple sites, how does this affect duplicate content? So there's two parts to this question. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, answer that first part. Good question. So People that are, hopefully, uh, everyone here is a, uh, an iMatrix, higher matrix, or vet matrix client. Uh, basically, how does that work? You're, you know, Mike, you're mentioning don't have duplicate content. Well, I see these other competitors or, or uh, colleagues of mine that have practices as well that have, uh, you know, iMatrix or vet matrix or whatnot. They have, this, they have the same community content. And I'm, I'm pretty much, I'm sure you're, you're referring to, like, the community content, the featured articles, things like that. So what that is for is that's actually there for more for the user experience uh, because of the fact that that's going to draw people to your website because of that information. They're going to go to your website. They're going to see all that content, see all that information. They're going to realize that you are an authority on that topic. And as you know, in the community content and the featured articles, they have a lot of great you know, how-tos, uh, 10 tips for this. Um, this is what this symptom basically means, you know, uh, sciatica. This is what it is, and this is how it affects it. Um, all these things are there as a library, as a content library, which is very beneficial uh, for your practice because when people go on there, they want to see all this content available because they're researching. They want to know what is, what is sciatica, you know, or what is this this lump on my pet's side? I don't I don't get it. What is it? They want to go and they want to kind of go to your website to learn that stuff. And then when they learn about what it is, then they're going to go ahead and be like, you know what? That's what that is. Okay, I need to get it checked out. Then they'll click request an appointment. Then they'll click on your call to action, call today, whatever it may be. Now, in regards to it being on every single person's website, the way that we've actually fixed that is there's something called a robot.txt file, robot text file. And so if anyone's kind of familiar, or maybe you're not familiar with when people actually, uh, people, when Google um, indexes your website, they do it like an index. They send out these little search bots, these, these web crawlers, basically to go out, and it's kind of like, it's part of their algorithm, um, goes out and it searches and it scans all the websites out there on the web. 
And basically what it does is it will look at all the different hierarchy, your whole site map, home page, uh, subcategories, subtabs, all these different things, links, the whole architectural structure of your website. And what happens is you can have a robot.txt file, robots.txt file um, embedded into your website, um, either on the very back end on the hard code of it, or you can upload it just into the file manager, whatever it may be, um, which we have on every single one of our websites, just to kind of clarify, to have it so that it has a no index and no follow links for particular pages. So for instance, if you have a bunch of content like the community content and the featured article content that you don't want to be indexed for specific reason because it's on multiple websites, you can have that TXT file embedded in there so that when it scans everything, it bypasses that content and it makes sure and scans the relevant custom content on your website. Now we do still encourage you having custom content. Now you have content available on the website, all we of all we actually kind of, I don't want to say request, but all we mention, we recommend, I should say, is that you just cater it to your practice. So basically, maybe just changing a couple keywords, adding a couple sentences here and there, so that it's just available to your practice. Having the full out custom content available that we offer, again, like in our Dominator service or other packages, that's definitely something that you want to make sure uh, that you have, because that's going to be longer content, a lot more in-depth in detail content about that service. You can really drill down about stuff and then it'll again pertain uniquely to your practice that no one else will have. Um, so that custom content, or sorry, the community content, the featured articles, all that stuff is definitely, definitely safe to have. We do have robot text files embedded on the hard code of all of our websites and our templates. So you definitely don't have to worry about having it be uh, duplicate content at all. But as far as it being beneficial, it's extremely beneficial because if you went to a website that had absolutely no content at all, I'd probably move from that website and go to someone that actually has something. Because the client doesn't know at all. The client does not know, um, and it's not tricking them at all, but it, they don't know whether you sat down and you know, for hours and wrote all that other content. They don't, to be honest, they really don't care. They want to go on the website and they are in need of your service, and they just want to make sure that they can get the information that they need to make that buying decision. There's a lot of buyer's remorse. People don't just go on there and say, you know what, this is what I want, boom, click. No, they want to make sure and do their research, um, and, and they should do that. So you want to make sure that you have that community content available, um, which you can hide and you can show based on your practice, uh, depending on what you offer. But definitely it is, it is a huge, uh, huge plus to have on there. But don't worry about it being duplicate. We make sure and took that um, out of the equation for you. And the second part of this is, how does uh, this affect your social media services? Uh, social media is duplicated from multiple sites. So social media doesn't fall on the same line of black hat tactics uh, for social media. It, it doesn't at all. And to be honest, um, actually the rule of thumb and part of their terms of service is the fact that once something goes on social media, on Facebook, it can be, it, it's not your property. It's basically anyone's property. Even if you have your, your logo on something, someone else can take it and just be like, oh yeah, look what I found and share it. That's, that's the whole point of social media is people share the content. So it needs to be available and widely available for people to share. Now, the reason we have that happen is because a lot of clients don't necessarily, they don't go to two veterinarians. They don't go to two optometrists, two doctors, two, two, vet, uh, two chiropractors. They only go to one. Um, and really, they don't gauge your practice and saying, I'm not going to go to this guy. He, he gets the same exact content on there. The purpose of our social media platform is to help with that engagement and to actually get people to engage with your content and to see what you're posting. Now, it's also there to help you work in tandem with it so that you can post blogs, you can post articles along with it because what the main purpose of it is to show that you guys are an active practice, that you are reaching out to your clients, that they like what you're posting, they comment on it, they click like, they share it, um, and that's essentially what you want because that's going to be seen by their friends and their family. So it kind of works in tandem with everything all together. Okay? So you want to make sure that um, when you're posting stuff, we have everything covered. We want to make sure that we don't have any black hat, black hat tactics uh, involved. We want to make sure that there's no duplicate content. And if it looks like it, we have it all covered on the back end with the robot text files as well as making sure that nothing else is considered to be penalized in that Google algorithm. So here's a good quick question. Uh, I did mention separating ad campaigns for each service we offer uh, to increase quality score, uh, definitely to help also with that segmentation. And are our services being separated per, uh, per, by each service by our account rep now, or is this something I should discuss for implementation? Everything that I've discussed in this webinar today 
is already being and has been done for, I'd probably say a couple of years now, uh, by our team here at iMatrix. Um, again, everyone here is Google certified, AdWords certified, Display certified, Search certified, Analytics certified. We are a Google partner. We, we make sure that we do everything that is in line with Google and everything that we do um, is pretty much, as soon as Google makes a change, we are making sure to shift gears to go in that direction. Um, like I mentioned, they make a lot of different uh, changes to their algorithm. We are constantly, constantly in the know and we are making sure that we have everything ahead of schedule um, so that way we can make sure it affects your business in a positive way. So yeah, definitely you don't, you can mention it to them, but I guarantee they're already doing this. Number two is Google's local section or their business section of the first page still solely dependent on Google Plus reviews. It is not solely dependent on Google Plus reviews. Again, these Google algorithm changes have changed a lot of things from uh, incorporating it from the review portion of it um, to the amount of reviews you have to, uh, I mean, it's, it's kind of one of those things where it just really is, you need to make sure that you are relevant on everything from Google Plus um, to having all that content available to also making sure that you have uh, people leave reviews on your Google, Google uh, business page because without any reviews, it definitely doesn't help, uh, but it doesn't hurt to have them as well. So you want to make sure that um, you do have those reviews in place, but again, it's not solely dependent on that. Here's another question. So I was told a while back by Matrix Support that I shouldn't try to add or change anything on my website, that I should call them and have them do it, uh, that Google didn't like it. Is this still true? It really depends. Now, I'm not going to say it's true or it's not. It's true in the aspect of if there's something that involves HTML coding, JavaScript, jQuery, funny uh, different uh, widgets, things like that. Those are definitely things that you probably want to have us fix because you can actually break your website um, and which will then affect the user experience and affect your rankings. If it has to do with content, um, it really depends on how familiar you are with a WYSIWYG. A WYSIWYG is basically uh, what you see is what you get. That's what it stands for. And so what that means is it's in uh, a little kind of a content editor uh, in our eye control or any other you know WordPress or whatever you might be using. Uh, and whatever you type out, basically is what's going to be seen on your website. So what you see is what you get. And sometimes if it involves putting a table in there or some borders or some kind of uh, inline styling or something like that, and you don't know how to do it, um, or your, your skills aren't uh, up to par to be able to do that, then it actually might look on your website broken and things are far out of the margins and just looks all funky. And that's probably where you want to give us a call because we actually um, know exactly what to do with that aspect. We know. Uh, Pretty much almost everyone here is a designer, I should say. Um, they all have some kind of back, background in graphic design, web design, anything like that. So they are very familiar with HTML, CSS, coding, things like that. So that's kind of where we would want you to call us so that you don't somehow on accident break your website and in, in essence affect your rankings. Um, when it comes to just maybe adding content, custom content, things like that, I definitely do encourage you to just feel free to do that yourself if you want to. Um, we want to make sure to encourage people to be able to do that um, you know, on your website your own. If you have a higher package that you have an actual an account manager, I would suggest having them do that because a lot of times they have specific things in place and they have a whole overarching plan to be able to help increase your SEO, to maintain your SEO, and to also make sure that nothing gets broken in case something happens where you might add something and it completely ruins the metadata, the descriptions, the, the whole flow of the, the, the website. Definitely consult with your account manager first. Let them know what you'd like to do. They can probably do it. They can probably show you how to do it, or they can address any kind of concerns. Good question. So if we modify your content, but iMatrix already has a robot.txt file, want the new customized content uh, still not be seen because of the existing robot.txt file, how do we address uh, it is shown? So the content I'm actually talking about, you might be talking about the on-page content. The on-page content is completely different. That's completely customizable. You can do whatever you want on that on those pages. That actually will help your ranking if you modify it, if you update it, you know, pretty much uh, keep it refreshed. The community content and the featured articles are actually content you actually can't change. It's not modifiable. Um, those are things that we have hard coded into the back end that we would have to personally change. Uh, but those are things that you probably don't want to change. Um, if you have a concern about something, let's say it shows a, a service, um, you know, symptom or whatnot. Let's say it's a, a back pain symptom, and you you basically look at it and you're like, that's not true. That's not that's not correct. 
um, call support, give us a call, let us know the concern, we definitely will look into it. We actually have had doctors, veterinarians, chiropractors, optometrists, ophthalmologists, um, a lot of different doctors write a lot of this content for us, the, the, the community content and the featured article content, um, the newsletter content, all that kind of stuff. Um, so we made sure to actually have professionals involved in that aspect, we didn't just do it ourselves. Uh, but that's where the robot tech TXT file is going to be incorporated. Your on-page content, like your home page, about us, uh, services, those kind of things, those are completely customizable and those don't have any kind of robot file uh, attached to them at all because we want those pages to be indexed. So some of those, when you get them right out the gate, they look very similar to other pages <clears throat> because of the fact that we are giving you uh, basically those initial templates. That's why it's very minimum on those home pages um, right when you get the website if you're a new client of ours. Um, because we want to have you be able to go in there and just kind of cater it, you know, to your practice. Add in your info, um, throw in, you know, a couple things here and there if you want to, put your bio in there, those kind of things. That's going to make it a little bit more custom. And then, of course, if you go with the higher end packages, that's where you start getting the custom content, premium package, dominator package. That's where we actually have someone write custom content for your practice. Um, so those pages themselves aren't actually going to be um, blocked by anything. So, let's uh, see, descriptions you can provide on chiropractic or massage. I'm guessing the descriptions are still on the community content uh, side of it. Uh, the community content is, again, something that you can't uh, access. Again, if you have any further questions that we can probably show you, if you want to give us a call, I'll have someone contact you uh, to kind of show you where that's at. But that's usually on, on the right side. You'll see um, what they call accordion uh, pieces, and um, that's actually the community content. If I could pull it up, I would, but um, that's considered community content. So the content that you can edit isn't blocked by TXT file, the robots file. Um, the content that you can't edit is the one that is blocked for reasons. So definitely give us a call. We can show you and, and help you out with that. But yeah, we want to make sure that any content that is editable is not blocked by Google, but the content that's not editable is blocked, so that way you don't get penalized. Okay, so that was the last of the questions. We did run over time. I am surprised everyone's still in here. I really do appreciate it. Again, if you have any further calls, I'm um, sorry, questions, give us a call, 1-800-462-8749 uh, or 1-800-IMATRIX. Again, we will offer you 50% off initial setup, uh, which is a lot. It's almost $1,000, I believe, off of uh, the initial setup of the Dominator service. Dominator is the all-encompassing package. If you aren't interested in Dominator, definitely ask us about any other specific service whether it's social, if it's media, uh, premium, which is awesome. If you're looking to not go all the way dominator, I definitely recommend doing premium. It's at half the cost. It's more than half the cost of it. And you get that custom content feel. So you can really start building that custom content library um, with our premium service. It's a great package. Uh, but then again, we have everything available for you. If you have questions, let us know. We'll help you out. And if you want to have us help you out with your service and your business, again, let us know there as well. Um, thank you again for attending today's webinar, and we will have this emailed out to everyone. We'll also have it on our YouTube channel, and hopefully everyone has a wonderful, wonderful week and a wonderful month, and we will see you guys later.